Change of mood, because it's that time of day again, my favorite time of the day, time to hear some good news at last. Now, they don't often cross my path, but apparently there's a new 50 pound note out today. Uh, it features the one, the only, Alan Turing, the World War II code breaker. It's been launched on the scientist's birthday. It features a photo of him taken in 1951. Well, the paper 50 pound note is the last to be replaced by a polymer version, which is waterproof and harder to rip, making them last longer. The two windows and two colour foil makes it uh, much more difficult to counterfeit, which is one of the reasons they brought it in. Turing's 50 note joins the... Who's on the five pound note? I could see on the uh, also cure it's Winston Churchill, Ten but you know... Note. Jane Austen, because I yeah, saw it on the auto queue as well. And GMW Turner <laughs> on the £20 note. Now, Turing was, of course, famous for breaking the Enigma code during the Second World War. Never seen a £50 note, never will. Definitely. Looks a bit like a young Simon McCoy with the, with went, the hair. Well, he went to my school. So. Oh, did he? Yeah. Is, is that like a compulsory hairdo that, that you then keep for I'm life? All the highly intelligent. <laughs> it's looking know, lovely. Everybody expects it to come off. It doesn't. Right. <laughs> now, and... <laughs> A new approach discovered by scientists at Cambridge University could make symptoms of COVID milder and speed up recovery times. Now, this focuses on fixing cell damage as a result of the illness rather than fighting the virus directly. Current approaches to dealing with infections target the virus with antiviral drugs, but Cambridge scientists have switched focus to target the body's cellular response instead. Antiviral drugs currently in use to treat COVID, such as remdesivir, they target replication of the virus. But if the virus develops resistance to these drugs, well, they, frankly, will no longer work. The Cambridge research suggests that their method will work even if new variants emerge, because the virus needs the cellular response in order to replicate. The next step is to test the treatment on mice, and scientists also want to see whether it works against other viruses as well, but uh, good to know that science is still pushing yeah. forward on this. What's amazing about this segment is we put in so much, you especially so much of these innovations and things that universities are doing, and it makes you realise we are really impressive as a nation, aren't we? Well, what we're talking about today is testing in, well, we've seen with the, the, the vaccination program, haven't we, how quickly when scientists turn their mind to it and they get the mm. support, things can happen quite fast. Now, a new British-built solar-powered drone which its developers claim can stay in the air for over a year. It's been developed by BAE Systems at their facility in Lancashire. The drone with a 115-foot wingspan could be an alternative to low-Earth orbit satellites. It can fly about 70,000 feet above the surface for 20 months, harnessing power from the sun to stay airborne, charging a bank of small batteries during the day to keep it flying overnight, allowing, of course, for longer operations. It can carry cameras, sensors, communications equipment. Uh, BA system says it will be available by the middle of the decade to provide a persistent and affordable alternative to satellite technology. Hurrah! Amazing, isn't it? Great. I mean, how much stuff is up there in the sky now? Well, not much with uh, travel restrictions, but when we get well, back no, going... In satellite terms, there is, but, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a lot, isn't it? 70,000 is quite mm. twice as high as... Y yeah. Your jets. Yeah. And it's, we don't often get a drone on the show. <laughs> that was a joke. It didn't really work, very did it? Nearly. I was trying very, hard. Very nearly funny. <laughs> now, there's good news for leaseholders who often face hikes in their ground rent. This is important because two big players in the leasehold sector have agreed to change the way they operate. And this follows an investigation by the competition watchdog. House builder Persimmon will allow its leaseholders to buy the freehold of their property at a discount, whilst the insurance company Aviva, which buys leaseholds from house builders, will repay homeowners who saw their ground rents double. The Competition and Markets Authority launched its investigation into leaseholds two years ago because it was worried that leaseholders were facing huge and unexpected increases in the cost of buying a freehold or massive increases in ground rents. It said that the commitments by Persimmon and Aviva are a real win. And it's good news to have some good news about the property market. Oh, picture. it really is. And if others follow, this actually will be really... And I have a leasehold. It, it, it's something to keep an eye on. Oh, I don't have anything. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> our thanks to the Mirror for this story about a missing dog that reappeared after 11 years. Sarah Cavell and her family had only had their Jack Russell puppy Crumpet for three months when she went missing after disappearing from their garden. The little, little dog, Lickle as well, Lickle dog, had been playing with another pet in the secure garden back in 2010, but when Sarah went to fetch it, she was gone. The family were devastated. They launched a search for the pup. They checked with the microchip company, offered a £300 reward for her return. But eventually, Sarah and her family had to accept that they wouldn't see Crumpet again. Well, fast forward to this month, and Sarah was shocked to receive a call from an emergency vet informing them that their dog had been found on a golf course just a few miles from their home in Sherbourne in Dorset. 
11 years after she first went missing. Uh, she says, my reaction to getting the call was slight disbelief, to be honest. It's a bit miraculous that she's come back into our lives. And every morning, we're like, wow, she's still here. So it's a bit weird, but it's also lovely. Obviously, uh, as soon as we saw her, when she came to us, there was a lot of wiggling around and wagging of tails. Don't know what the dog did, but something similar, probably. Anyway, no one knows where she's been. Uh, the time hasn't been ki kind to Crumpet. She's actually had puppies uh, of her own in that time. She also needed a lot of veterinary care, but she's home. 11 years, that's a long game of golf. Yeah, oh, you're, 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 some days you're really great. <laughs> Not this one. Now, as a batsman, <laughs> I'm only joking. Now, as a batsman, all you want to do, of course, is to hit that big one and get as many runs as you can. Well, you're about to see a cricketer hit a massive six, but unfortunately for him, it went straight through the windscreen of his own car. Just listen for the smash. The cost of repairs, club chairman said. He's renowned for his big hitting. He's a very destructive batsman. It was right off the middle of the bat, went right through the middle of the screen. Uh, I've agreed to pay for his windscreen repair, added the chairman, and that, frankly, is the least they could do. That's brilliant. Love it. Like those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you want to create the perfect car, it's got to have the perfect finish. Bentley Motors has officially just opened a new excellent centre for vehicle finish at his factory in Crewe. Look at this. Following its meticulous production process, which combines traditional craft and state-of-the-art technology, every single Bentley will now be finished in the new facility by a team of hand-picked craftspeople. Only once they are happy will the car be signed off for delivery to Bentley's customers around the world. Now, depending on the model, there are something like 500 to 650 point checklists that take more than two hours for them to complete. The result uh, of this historic passion for quality is the fact that more than 80% of all hand-built Bentley cars ever built are still on the road. 80%. Wow. That's, 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 that's astonishing. That's do it. they, I mean, this excellent centre, do they also do TV presenters? Uh, yeah, that would take several weeks. <laughs> and that's just getting you in there. Now, <laughs> more than 50 jobs, this is good news, have been created as the international soft drinks manufacturer Prince's announces the doubling of capacity at its plant in Cardiff. It's completed the first phase of a planned £60 million investment in the site with the installation of seven new state-of-the-art soft drink production lines. Prince's Cardiff site currently produces one litre ambient juices, multi-packs and ready-to-merchandise display units. Prince's says it will be able to expand its product range beyond fruit juice and enter new markets as well as introducing new packaging sizes. So that's good news in Cardiff. I have a question. Yeah. What are ambient juices? Oh, do you know, I knew you were going to ask <laughs> So, that mean? Like, like rather than away. just concentrated juices, these are, they concentrate the juice, they let the water evaporate off, and then what's left is then added to water. So it's, it's, oh, so it's, it's a different process. Right, okay. I love the fact you knew I was going to ask it. Yeah, I, I hope I've got that right. Out. I know I'll get emails to say if I'm wrong and I'll put out an apology tomorrow. But that, <laughs> that I think, is it. Anyway, now it's National Thank a Teacher Day. Did you know that? I didn't. All right. Well, it's where we get to thank and recognise the hard work and dedication of teachers, particularly during the pandemic. Among those paying tribute to their teachers, the Prime Minister. Today is Thank a Teacher Day, and I want to thank all the teachers throughout our country uh, who've done an outstanding job in very difficult circumstances throughout the pandemic, helping children through what has been a, uh, an unprecedented period. And uh, I want to thank my own teachers, uh, Mr Hammond, Martin Hammond, wonderful uh, teacher who, uh, who revealed Homer to me many years ago. But long before that, there was a fantastic guy called Mr Fox, fantastic Mr Fox uh, of Primrose Hill Primary School, Camden, which I attended along with uh, the Miliband brothers. And I don't know what, whether Mr Fox thought that I was in need of remedial help or whether he thought I had some kind of potential. It wasn't 
clear what it was, but he took me into the library, he gave me some books, and it made a huge difference. And uh, it's because teachers make such a colossal difference uh, to our children and to their prospects that we're investing uh, massively in, in education, not just making sure that each teacher starts off with a, a decent salary of £30,000 uh, each, but uh, now new funds we're putting in uh, to make sure that teachers have further opportunities to progress their careers. Thank you to all teachers today. Rather tired looking Bryce Johnson there, I thought. Yeah, I think he always looks a bit tired and a bit scruffy, doesn't he? He's right. But I, actually, I just want to say thank you, Mrs. Spilsbury. She was one of my absolute favourite teachers. She was my English teacher at Sir Thomas Rich's Grammar School in Gloucester. Great. Well, well done you. Yeah. Look, look how you've turned I wanted out. to take... The, I know. <laughs> She'll be so thrilled. <laughs> now... I want to bring you a story about eels, but it's really about the headline that goes with the story. You, you alerted me to this. Headline writers are the unsung heroes in the newspaper business, and this has got to be one of the best ever. It accompanies the tale of the moray eel that has the ability to grab and swallow prey on land using their special jaw system. And uh, we've got pictures of the slither eel, but look, that, that's the headline. Uh, when, an, when an eel climbs a ramp to eat squid from a clamp, that's a moray. That is so brilliant. It's very clever. Now, that I'll read that. So I'm going to read that again. It, let, let's, let's just put that, if we can, put yeah. that graphic up again, because it, it's all in the reading, and I think I might that up a bit. So let me try again. When an eel climbs a ramp to eat squid from a clamp, that's a moray. Now, you just imagine the song you, you that goes with it. You need to be singing it. That's the problem. No. Go on, you want to sing it? When an eel clamps a ramp to eat squid from a clamp, that's a moray. Yay! There you go. Bravo! <laughs> you, you, you can hold a note, actually. You're not bad. I thought it was going to be worse. Oh, that's, that's pretty decent. I'm going to put well a bill done, in for that one. Right, thank you very much. Now, this is a great story. <laughs> Amazon founder and billionaire Jeff Be Bezos, Bezos, Bezos is scheduled to take off into space next month. And th thousands of people have signed a petition to stop him returning to Earth. <laughs> now, the founder of Amazon and space exploration firm Blue Origin had said he and his brother Mark will be aboard the New Shepard rocket for its first ever human flight. That's on July the 20th. Now, according to the website Insider, just a few days after Bezos' announcement, two petitions were launched to try and stop him coming back. More than 35,000 individuals have signed a Change.org petition titled Do Not Allow Jeff Bezos to Return to Earth. <laughs> Change.org describes that, uh, the page uh, to be on track to becoming one of the top signed <laughs> on its website ever. Uh, a common sentiment among signatories who want to defend Earth against billionaires like Bezos reads, billionaires should not exist on Earth or in space, but should they decide the latter, they should stay there. <laughs> that is utterly can you imagine if you know if it's like the government one, you get a hundred thousand, there has to be some sort of debate, and then the message goes up to the spacecraft. Sorry, mate, well, no. we're not letting you back down. Don't <laughs> <Have> come back. <laughs> I, he'll still do it. Anyway, finally, some good news about pandas. There's no such thing as bad news about pandas. Did Giant it? panda Shin Shin has given birth to twin cubs. This is at Tokyo's Ueno Zoo. The first panda birth there in four years. Now the gender of the baby pandas hasn't been determined. They've not yet been named. Uh, and I bet you didn't expect a newborn panda. Well, have we got pictures? Uh, it's all about the pictures. There we go, look at that. That is what a newborn panda looks like. Yeah, we, we were looking at this earlier, one of the producers and I, and we couldn't understand what, what the long tail was all about. It's... Well, I'll cut it short if you like. Oh, yeah, that long tail. <laughs> Well, oh, oh. Good. Now, all the staff are apparently working together to observe and protect the giant panda mother and children, the zoo said in a statement on its website. One of the cubs weighs 124 grams. The other's weight is unknown, and it's not known when the newborn cubs will go on display at the zoo. They're uh, watching them, keeping an eye on them. But any panda birth gets a mention absolutely guaranteed on this particular site. Yeah, they don't, they don't, you know, give birth that often, do they? It's no, they don't. a bit of a rarity. They're cheaper to keep than other animals. Are they? The license is cheaper, yeah, because they're black and white. Oh, no, that was good! Oh. I knew that was going to be... First of all, I didn't know that was going to be a joke. Then I waited for it and, oh, it delivered. I'm showing my age it now. It delivered. Black and, white, black and white license? What's he on about? Anyway. It was good.